one side, that which does not benefit can acknowledge it. So, what are we to do about it? Firstly, without awareness and acknowledgement, there can be no action. We cannot fix what we will not fix. The Bank of Bermuda Foundation has shifted their approach on the basis of their findings. What if we all were to do this? What if we were to personally acknowledge at every step how privilege has brought us to where we are, and upon accepting it as truth, what if we were to do something about it? When I speak of privilege, I do not limit that to race. Race, sex, and class all intersect to form different levels of privilege. I am a college-educated black man. Those two descriptors afford me certain privileges. In Bermuda, men earn 20% more, sorry, men earn 10% more than women on average. A college-educated man earns 20% more than one with a secondary school diploma. However, there is a higher unemployment rate for college-educated black men than there are for white men without a college degree. When I was growing up, my parents worked hard and invested all they could in my education, believing that education would unlock the keys to opportunity. When I returned to Bermuda in 2003, I had hoped that master's degree in hand, I and my peers would have a home in the business community. Yet, even those of us who had university degrees and advanced certifications struggle in the two Bermudas. For many Bermudians, struggle is something that has always defined us. Others in our community don't understand it at all. This is one of the fundamental divides we see between the two Bermudas. And to say that race does not play a role in this divide is to lack a fundamental understanding of our country's tortured history. Recently, I discussed the need for reforming many aspects of our society, including tax and immigration policies, in order to address the problem of the two Bermudas. The man I spoke with said, and I quote, everywhere in the world has haves and have nots. That will always be the case. The answer is not to destabilize the country." End quote. How sad that the introduction of a remedy is immediately met with the accusation to destabilize. How sad that we are content to remain in a world of unfairness so that we do not have to answer the hard questions or face the uncomfortable truths. Bermuda has always been an expensive place to live but somehow we managed to get by, typically by being able to hold two or more jobs with sustainable salaries. We had a strong middle class, and on either side, a small group of wealthy elites and an equally sized population of the marginalized and disaffected. Today, however, we have the highest cost of living in the world with polarized wealth and growing numbers of the unemployed and impoverished. What we have today is the conundrum of two Bermudas and all that it entails. It is an uncomfortable place to be because it brings into clear vision the fragility that is Bermuda today and it threatens the very economic growth, social stability, and progress I have no doubt that we all want. Alongside this economic divide, in fact, woven into it, is the equally problematic racial divide. In large measure, although not exclusively so, this divide is connected to the economic disparity in ways all too familiar to many Bermudians. Bermuda is far too small to have the persistence of such divisions, and we collectively have a responsibility to fix them to help create a stronger Bermuda. Allow me a few moments to express in real, everyday terms what this all means. We are a strong international financial services center with billion dollar companies and highly paid CEOs. This has been a large part of our success and it sustains us. However, in our two Bermudas, we have wealthy executives whose single month rent is more than many Bermudians take home pay in a year. Yet we have the young single mother who struggles daily in a low paid job while living in poverty. Her paycheck from working at a hotel 
for a 28-hour work week after deductions was $175, which equates to $6.25 an hour. $6.25 an hour is less than the federal minimum wage in the United States. In Bermuda, that is, an, that is an impossible wage for anyone to live on, especially if you are a mother trying to provide for a child. Expanding income inequality is the nature of today's world. These stories are played out in countries all over the globe. The nuance in Bermuda is that this wide divide confronts people daily. Bermuda does not have the luxury of large estates or isolated communities. The boy whose mother cannot afford to feed him breakfast rides the bus past the businessman eating at the Hamilton restaurant, champagne glasses in hand, toasting their latest success. Perhaps, to soften the blow, slavery is referred to as an historical crime. However, a crime with generational victims can never be just historical, especially when by failing to redress the generational inequities of an entire system built off the back of slavery, we perpetuate the same principles and ideolog ideologies that created that system in the first place. When the status quo benefits some to the continued disadvantage of others, it is not a historical crime, it is an ongoing crime. Race has long been the elephant in the room in Bermuda. Our history has made it such. And it seems that whenever we devolve into challenging times, whether they are economic, political, or social, our continuing divisions are torn open time and time again. We are no doubt experiencing such challenging times today, but racism and racial discord and racially inflammatory language should have no place in Bermuda. Each and every one of us in positions of leadership of any variety in my view have a social responsibility to dismantle the institutions which perpetuate racism and move us to a place where, as Bob Marley once said, and I quote, the color of a man's skin is no more significant than the color of his eyes, end quote. This is the Bermuda I want to see built for the sake of our children. Some people say today that they do not see color. By saying that, they deny our history, our experience, and who we are. Bermuda must strive towards non-racialism, but to claim we are there today is to deny the realities of overt, subtle, and structural racism that exists here in 2017 on our island. If the Bank of Bermuda Foundation can see it, why is it that so many in our island continue to deny it? 40 years ago, in 1977, following the riots, Dame Lois Brown Evans said to the international press, we have swept a backlog of sociological, economic, and political inequities under a manufactured facade to fester. With the mega yachts now arriving daily and international eyes on Bermuda, the facade seems more important than ever. Yet how can we create paradise when poverty meets privilege at every mark? The answer is in the ABCs. I've addressed the A of acknowledgement, but what comes next? In 2007, the Bermuda Race Relations Initiative launched the big conversation. 10 years later, we have seen Kerr embark on the truth and reconciliation conversations. Without this, Bermuda would not be in a position to acknowledge the struggle we face, and I commend all participants and organizers for the time and effort they have committed to our well-being. We must now move beyond acknowledgement to be building a better Bermuda that works for all and not just for some. We must build a Bermuda that dismantles racism by identifying and challenging those who perpetuate it. We must build a Bermuda that values all of our children by properly resourcing our public schools and our public school teachers. We must build a Bermuda that creates real opportunities for Bermudians by implementing a fair immigration policy that promotes employment and stimulates economic growth. We must build Bermuda that provides social support to our young people to prioritize crime reduction over crime punishment. We must build a Bermuda that provides our next generation with the opportunity to make better decisions so that they can have a real choice between a life of crime and a life of progress. 
We must move Bermuda where entrepreneurs who cannot go to their parents for a loan, but have a great idea and the drive to execute, have access to capital to innovate and to create jobs. And we must build Bermuda where the cost of living does not force Bermudians out of Bermuda. However, it is only through looking at and understanding the root causes of the problems that we can identify the solutions that we need. To build the Bermuda that we need, we must dismantle the two Bermudas that we currently have. How do we achieve this? In my view, this cannot be done without the sea, the sea of collaboration. We frequently talk about bipartisan reform, but by collaboration, I do not mean just about political parties. This buy-in must extend beyond government, beyond politicians, and take place across all segments of our society. From community clubs to social events, from big business to cultural initiatives, and to community service organizations such as Rotary, Across the board, we must look at how together we can achieve our goals to build a Bermuda that works and benefits us all. True change cannot happen unless both of the two Bermudas recognize that for our country to advance and for our country to unify and for our country to progress, we must take real action to create one Bermuda. My speech today is a call to both the privilege and to the disaffected. Bermuda can only move forward if the traditional rigid divisions of race and privilege can be replaced with a movement based on shared values, shared challenges, shared commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Recognizing that change, while uncomfortable for some in the short term, is beneficial to Bermuda in the long term. It is clear that the issues of joblessness, inequality, access to quality education, and the struggle to keep pace with the rising cost of living impacts the black community deeply. However, with Bermuda slipping back into recession and with Bermudian jobs being lost for yet another year, while non-Bermudian jobs have increased for two years in a row, more and more of white Bermudian citizens are beginning to lose ground when it comes to jobs, opportunity, access to quality education, and are beginning to understand that the elite and privilege are moving forward together while many Bermudians are being left behind. The failure to utilize the knowledge, skill, and ideas of all Bermudians is holding back Bermuda from reaching our full potential. Giving our children more incentive to leave the land of their birth and making more Bermudians of all races feel left out and left behind. It is clear that we must expand educational and economic opportunity by investing in a national training and retraining strategy designed to move our people from unemployment to employment, from poverty to the middle class, from employees in dead-end jobs to management, and yes, even to entrepreneurship. And we must take steps to provide more access to capital for those who do not have intergenerational wealth to rely on. <clears throat> Government must take the lead by introducing equality impact assessments as part of our legislative and policy development process to ensure that our laws and policies are neither exacerbating or adding to an already unfair and divided society. Our existing laws must be strengthened, enforced, and give comfort to every Bermudian that inequity has no place in our country. Government must also take the lead by ensuring that businesses are effectively promoting and implementing more diverse and inclusive work environments, where Bermudians of all races are being hired, trained, and promoted, and are rewarded. And government must also take the lead in ensuring that at every level of society, racism and discrimination is neither condoned nor profitable. We must work with international business to create a level playing field rather than a compensation and promotion system that favors the expatriate community, leaving educated Bermudians, both black and white, frustrated and disenfranchised. I would be remiss if I did not address one particular policy issue that defines the two Bermudas. It is the issue of pathways to status. This touches so many in our community because pathways to status mirrors the historic immigration policies rooted in racism, policies which were designed 
for political power. Policy prescriptions like pathways are the wrong policies, and instead of healing the divide, only serve to exacerbate that divide. Bermuda can collaborate on immigration reform that instead of exposing old wounds, works together on a solution that grows our economy and our population while ensuring that Bermudians come first. But this is not just a job for the government. As a community, we must display more than tolerance, more than respect. We must develop greater empathy for each other and a better recognition that the values we share and the commitment to a better Bermuda are greater than what divides us. Collectively, we must move to a place in society where talking about race is not viewed as perpetuating the problem, but is understood as what is necessary to work towards the solutions to this vexatious issue, which was, has held Bermuda back from the progress it can make. When I was a child, I, like many Bermudians, often heard that the racial divide would fix itself perhaps when the older generation passed from this earth. Individuals of my parents' generation often heard the same thing. Just this week on social media, I saw the same hope expressed that the issues of racism and inequity will fix themselves once yet another generation fades away. How many more generations must keep hoping that the next generation will fix this divide? How long will it take for us to realize that this divide is not fixing itself fast enough, thorough enough, or strong enough? I believe Bermuda can do better. I know that we can face this long-standing divide and take real action to address it. I believe that building a Bermuda of inclusion, empathy, and opportunity for all is the only way forward, and really the only hope that we have for a better Bermuda. It is the responsibility of the leaders of our country, whether they be political, business, clergy, to do what is necessary to turn the two Bermudas into one Bermuda. And everyone here, especially Rotarians, can play a part. The Rotary website says, and I quote, Rotary is a global network of 1.2 million neighbors, friends, leaders, and problem solvers who come together to make a positive, lasting change in the communities at home and abroad, end quote. The Bank of Bermuda Foundation has acknowledged the problem and has taken action to make positive, lasting change here in Bermuda. It is my view that building one Bermuda is a positive, lasting change for our island home. And it is my hope that just like the Bank of Bermuda, Hamilton Rotary will pay a large part in moving our island from the tail of two Bermudas to a reality of a truly unified island, one where we have one Bermuda. Thank you for listening.